In order to completely push Ukrainian forces out of Kursk, the Russian Defense Ministry needs 15 to 20 brigades. We are talking about 50,000 servicemen, which the Kremlin simply does not have at the moment and has nowhere to get reserves. And the fighting in Kursk region has been going on since August the 6th, 2024. The Russian Defense Ministry stated that on October the 3rd, Ukrainian forces attempted to break through the defense of the Russian armed forces in the Novi Put area. Russian war correspondents write that Putin's army managed to restore its positions in the Vesyoloi area and the battles for the settlement are still ongoing. In this area, the enemy deployed the 83rd Airborne Brigade. Fighting continues on the main Ukrainian salient in the Kursk region. However, it has not yet led to a change in the front line. Recently, Suspilnoi journalists published a report about conscripts who are fighting against the Ukrainian armed forces in Kursk region. According to Russian lawyers Regina Ivshina, law enforcement agencies received complaints from mothers of soldiers from 10 different military units of the Russian Federation. According to her, there may be up to a thousand conscripts in Kursk region. Journalists from the BBC wrote that the conscripts are in the 488th and 245th motorized regiments of the Moscow military district. Recall the incursion of several thousand Ukrainian troops into the Kursk region in early August was the first time Russian territory had been attacked and occupied by foreign forces since the German invasion of 1941, a major event by any reckoning. Its symbolic dimension received wide coverage in the Western media. For Russian President Vladimir Putin, it was a grave affront, especially as the operation relied on Washington approving the use of short-range US missiles. Reactions in Russia to events in Kursk evolved rapidly, much as they did in the autumn of 2022 during the Ukrainian counter-offensive in the Kharkiv region and Yevgeny Prigozhin's attempted coup in June 2023, first came shock, then anger, and ultimately acceptance of the new normal. The loss of Volodar increases the pressure on Ukrainian troops in the Donetsk region who are suffering from a shortage of ammunition and personnel since significant resources are directed at holding positions in the Kursk region, which is in Russian territory, writes The Times. The Russian victory, though largely symbolic, could pave the way for further gains north and east of the city. While those gains are unlikely in the coming months as the rainy season and winter set in, President Putin's apparent military goal of capturing the entire Donetsk and Luhansk regions is moving somewhat closer, the publication said. However, Russian military bloggers did not celebrate the capture of Volodar, as many doubt that the Russian army can quickly advance further into the territory controlled by Ukraine, writes The Times. The publication noted that Volodar is heavily mined, so Russian occupiers need time to clear the city of mines and ammunition that did not explode. In addition, further advancement of the Russian Federation will be impeded by Ukrainian defense positions to the northeast of the city. Russia's capture of Volodar is unlikely to fundamentally change the course of offensive operations in the west of Donetsk Oblast, mainly because Volodar is not a particularly important logistical hub and also because Russian troops control most of the main roads leading to Volodar. The Institute for the Study of War emphasized. At the same time, the Times added that in order to capture Pokrovsk, the Russian invaders must maneuver in open terrain for about 30 kilometers. The city is of strategic importance due to its railway connection, and this means that an assault on Pokrovsk, which is under constant shelling by the Russian Federation, is unlikely, the publication's analysts assured. As reported, the Ukrainian defense forces have withdrawn from the city of Volodar in Donetsk Oblast. The Kortitsia Special Operations Command added that as a result of the enemy's actions, there is a threat of encirclement of the city. At the same time, the commander of the battalion of the strike UCAV Achilles of the 92nd Separate Assault Brigade, named after Ivan Sirko, Yuri Fedorenko, stated that the loss of Volodar is not critical for Ukraine. At the same time, he noted that Russia continues to gradually implement the plan for the occupation of Ukrainian territory. The enemy will try to advance in the near future by means of a creeping offensive, one way or another, with losses that are disproportionate to the results they receive on the battlefield. 
As for the loss of certain populated areas, they are determined in particular by military expediency and, most importantly, by preserving the lives and health of our servicemen, Fedorenko noted. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Wednesday held a meeting with the administrator of the United States Agency for International Development, Samantha Power, in Kiev. During the meeting, Zelensky stressed the importance of U.S. support heading into winter. Organizing this meeting. Yes, thank you so much. And of course, during our uh, I had some uh, discussions with ministers, and I understood that you will have a meeting with the prime minister. Yeah, there are some questions, and uh, but for us, for me, is very important your support during before the winter. It's again that I'm underlining this before the winter. We count on your support, and I think it's the most important, the, the biggest priority. Or also we had, we have some projects. As far as I remember, nine, nine projects in you know your ministry. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes you, I mean that you will you will discuss. Like my North Star, and what will keep the people here. Uh